Okay, welcome to 2-3. We're talking about piecewise defined functions. Uh, that's nothing more than a single function, but one that is defined by two or more equations. And it's where each equation applies to a different part of the domain. So the domain is our x of variables that are allowed, and we take and sort of slice up the horizontal parts of different graphs and piece them together. That's where we get the term piecewise. Okay, well, we're going to try a little example here where uh, we've got three uh, equations and we're going to slice them all up and put them together to make a piecewise defined function. So here's our first equation. It's uh, just f of x equals 2, so it's a constant uh, graph. We've got a second one, which is a parabola. It's f of x equals 1 half x squared, uh, simple parabola. And then we've got a third one, which is a line with a slope of 2, goes to the origin. So it's simple 2x. All right, I'm going to cut these up and piece them back together, and we'll make a single function. OK, well, you can see I've cut them up into strips here. And uh, what I've done is I've cut a vertical line, a vertical cut at 4, at negative 4, that is, and then another one at positive 2. And so this is my top graph. If I keep the left-hand side of the top graph and then go down one layer to graph B for the middle bit, easier said than done, and there's the middle bit. And then I take the bottom piece for the last graph, and I put them together, I get a piecewise defined function. So it's a graph that is at 2 until it gets to negative 4, then it jumps up to the parabola, goes down and does its parabola thing, and then at 2 it jumps up to the other line. And this is nothing more than a piecewise defined function. But what we need to do is to write it down so that somebody else could graph it and get this and only this. We also need to decide where the jumps are because the function can't exist at this place and at that place at the same instant. So we can just say, well, we want this to be the open circle and this to be the closed dot. And we can say that this is the open circle and this is the closed dot. And once we make up our mind that it's going to look like this, then we just have to pay attention to our boundaries of the domain. Like I, like I said, this goes infinitely to the left but comes up to negative 4. This graph right here is between negative 4 and positive 2. And then this one picks up at positive 2 and goes infinitely upwards and to the right. So I've drawn this here and there it is put together. And the way we do this is we just say, well, our function, our piecewise defined function, is going to be f of x, and that's going to be equal to, and then we can do this bracket thing like this, and just say, well, the first part is that line, it's 2. Okay, if you go back to our original equation, I wrote it down as saying right here, f of x equals 2, so I write 2 right there. And then b, if you'll recall, is one-half x squared, so I write one-half x squared. And then finally, you'll remember for c, which is underneath this, I have 2x, so I write 2x. But I need to say where these slices are and what happens at the boundaries of the slices. And so I'll say then for any x that is going to be less than but not equal to negative 4, because that starts at negative 4 and does not include it, and then goes less than. And that takes it forever to the left. This one is between negative 4, including negative 4, and up to 2, but not including it. So I'll put x in the middle, and I'll say that it's going to be greater than or equal to negative 4, but less than and not including 2 for this middle part, and then the upper part, if you want to pause the camera and see how you might write it, check, and I'll have, um, give, take a second to do that, all right, and this is going to be for any x that is greater than or equal to 2, all right, so each one of these functions has to match up with the part of the domain that it's corresponding to, all right, so there it is.
So if we turn in the book and look at uh, maybe problem number four here, okay, you can find it in your book. Um, it's a rather complicated W, all right, and I'll do that very briefly. Okay, here I am with W and I've got a sheet of paper. So if we're going to write a piecewise defined function, that's like problem number four, you can see we've got one, two, three, four parts of it. So we're going to have to have all four of those equations and then their corresponding parts of the domain. Well, this first one, if you look, it goes down uh, five squares and over, oops, I apologize, it goes down six squares and over two. So that has a slope of negative six over positive two or negative three, okay? And it has an intercept that's at seven. So this is just going to be like a y equals mx plus b form, negative three x plus seven, okay? It's not too hard to do these in your head when it's just like that and you can see the actual intercept. Um, and that corresponds with um, zero to positive two. So I can say that x is greater than or equal to zero and less than or equal to positive two. And I don't have to worry because they coincide whether or not that is equal to or just less than. This next line is going up with the same slope. It's got a, I mean, a correspondingly opposite slope. It's 3x, but where's the intercept? Well, if I go down 3 and back 1 and down 3 and back 1, I can count it out and it's going to be at negative 5, or I could substitute in a point. Um, the point would be over 2, up 1, substitute in 2, comma 1 with this and solve for b, and I would get negative 5. All right, you can use graph paper, you can use my dot paper, you can count it out on your fingers or whatever, but you can find that intercept by just continuing this line on further. And that's going to be between 2 and 4. So I just do the same thing. I do 2, I do 4, I do my greater than or equal to and my less than or equal to, and there it is. Okay, now this line is going down, again with the same slope, down 6 and over 2. So it's negative 3x question is where is that intercept going to be? All right. So this might be a little bit harder, but if I say I know it's going to be in the form of y equals mx plus b, all right, and then I solve by just putting in one point. I can put in this point right here over 6 and up 1. So that's 1, and here's my negative 3 times 6 plus b. All right, you see how that is? I've substituted in this point right there, which is over 6 and up 1, 6 and 1, and I know the slope is down negative 3. And then I solve, and it's 1 equals negative 18 plus b. So I add 18 to both sides, and it's going to be plus 19. And then I just put my little part of the domain, which is going to be from 4 to 6, and I do this again. We're getting good at it. And then finally, I do the same thing with this final line. Why don't you do that one and see if you can figure it out and bring that in tomorrow. All right, thanks. Okay, we're looking at page uh, 87 here. This is uh, sample two. It's quite a good problem. It just talks about uh, the real world situation of um, car insurance for you young drivers on up to um, adulthood. Uh, this is an actual replication of the Texas automobile rules and um, the class of the driver and the age and the Harris County premium for insuring that driver. Uh, if you look at the graph here, it's pretty simple. The younger you are, guess what? The more you pay, you're a higher risk. And they simply have it between 16 up to age 21. That's one bracket. You're paying around $1,495. Uh, that's yearly insurance. Um, and then when you get to be 21, if you have a good driving record, up to 25, you drop down. You're less of a risk. And then here, as you reach age 25, supposedly you're married and settled down and being responsible, you pay a lot less money. So a typical kind of a step function that is considered to be a piecewise uh, function. And you can see here is the amount that you pay. And there are the parameters within which you are subject to those payment amounts. Okay, so that's an example of a real-world piecewise function.